entered a piece of work when I was 17 and I've read about it for years when I was younger. I've always wanted to be a part of it. When I first entered the summer exhibition, my eldest son was about four and now he is in his 40s. He's six foot four and I'm four foot five. I just think of it as one of our real institutions, you know, established for a long time. You've got to put the right labels on. A really prestigious place. We've got the names on. So entering the competition is slightly daunting because I've only just really started. I'm, I'm quite prolific, so I'm making, making, making. Last night I was in here till really early hours. I was messaging my friend and she's like, Charlotte, go to bed. It's too late now. And I'm like, no, I just need to do a bit more. Oh dear, here we go again. <laughs> Come find the end. Well, I read somewhere that they have 13,000 entries. Carol made me this bag, it's the perfect size. Good luck. Thank you. I feel really nervous, but I also feel quite excited as well, because it could mean a new phase in my life. It's the top one. If you get in there, then I think you've got it made. If I got in this year, it would be fantastic. I'll enter it, see what happens. This is the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. It's the largest open art exhibition anywhere in the world. And over the years, I've come many times. I've visited it, I've had to review it, I've even entered work into it. But the thing I always think when I see people submitting work here is, why do they do it? Why, in fact, do we do it? Where does this compulsion to create actually come from? I remember when my hubby was very ill. I was sitting up in bed two o'clock in the morning doing the watercolour and I could forget all that was going on. You lose yourself in it. If you love what you do so much you'll do it if you're on your own wherever you are you can do it living in a cardboard box. But if you're a painter or a sculptor or a poet or a writer or a filmmaker, you will make sure you do that. If you're dedicated and you're going to be an artist, you'll do it. My husband has always been very supportive. I was really ill for a long time and had a long treatment. And at the end of it, he said to me that, that I should do what I love after everything that I had been through. I've been shortlisted 10 times. And last year, I actually got in. That was fabulous. You know, one of the judges is one of my icons, Norman Ackroyd, and he's a printmaker, and his work is fantastic. It's quite exciting to think of Norman Ackroyd seeing my work. That is actually a bit of a dream, really. This is an extraordinary exhibition where we attempt to open it up to the entire country and abroad that they can submit before us. They're going to be judged by their fellow artists. They're not judged by art historians and curators. And that's, that's pretty unique, really. It's wonderful, some of this stuff, isn't it? I think I appreciate much more the judges being artists than critics. I think the fact that, that anybody can enter, anybody can enter, so everyone's on an equal footing. I'd like to keep those two back. And it is quite just, you know, no, 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 maybe. 
we're going to look at a total of possibly, oh, possibly 10, 11,000. You sometimes, when you've not chosen one for a while, think, are my eyes getting jaded? And then suddenly something good hits you and you realise it's not that. The good thing will still hit you, you know, and you'll be able to keep it back for the hang. That's actually well painted. You're just not quite sure exactly what they're looking for. You can't please everybody, so I think you should stick to what you know and what you believe in. It has to be genuine and say the truth. I think that's what good art can say as well. It's like uh, John Keats and Ode to a Grecian Urn. Beauty is truth and truth beauty. That is all you need to know. And there's nothing more I can do. And it's in the judge's hands now. Oh, there's some different work going on. Mine won't stand a chance in there. There is no Royal Academy of Arts picture. It's a matter of taste. It is all about taste, and taste is a very personal thing. Now, all careers in the art world depend to some extent on the vagaries of taste, the judgment of others, but it's especially true of the thousands of unknown artists who submit work here at the Royal Academy every year. And right now, in the vaults beneath the RA, there are more than a 1,000 works of art which have made it through the first round of judging. And today, I'm going to have a look through them with a top-draw commercial art dealer. I'm very curious to find out what she makes of it all. Come in here and come into the vaults of the Royal Academy. The vaults of the Royal Academy, what a privilege. It took the judges five days to choose the shortlisted 1,000, but only half of this lot will actually make it onto the walls. So, I think it would be quite good if we try and select a few works that we think will make it in. It's not a competitive thing. Maybe it is. It could be slightly. <laughs> um, but to, in order to handle it, we've got to wear these gloves. And then I think we're allowed to just kind of rummage around. Great. And we can see what we can find. Well, I'm going to go around here, I think. I have a feeling there's some fertile okay. picture territory this way. I'm going to head over here. John is my art handler for the day. And you have a colleague who's going to look after Kate, right? Uh, yeah, let's start this end and work our way through. How do you actually approach this, genuinely, when you see works of art that you've never encountered before? You can give them really just a couple of seconds and know if it's something you're going to engage with or that's interesting. So it's a gut thing? Yeah, I think it is. But it is interesting taste, because in a funny way it feels like quite a conscious, refined thing that you learn but um, you're saying it's the opposite, that it's something much more instinctual. I think, it's, I think you can combine the two in an ideal world. But again, it's always going to be you know, highly personal to me. In some ways, I think doing the job that I do, I may have lost my own personal taste. It's quite hard for me to choose art that I want to buy for myself, to sort of divorce myself from my day job. Oh, actually, that's quite interesting. It's an origami work. Mm. Don't look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheating. Actually, when you go back, there was a drawing there, unfinished, and it sort of stayed with me. What you potentially see in the summer exhibition isn't necessarily what's considered, you know, the cutting edge of the avant-garde London art scene. Um, but I think that's really refreshing because I think we think we're these big tastemakers and everything that we show in our galleries is, is the be-all and end-all. And actually, we're probably speaking to a much, much, much smaller audience than this show would speak to. I mean, this is seen by probably 200,000 people, the summer show, and enjoyed by them. You know, it's completely non-elitist. Do you actually rather like that one? Okay. Yes, please. This stack for me, is barren. Let's find another stack. I'm going to come over to that stack in a minute. You're going to find now I'm going to all make five millions. of your work. I'm going to sell them all for millions of pounds. <laughs> all right, Kate, well, this is your selection. It is, yep, yeah, this is what I've come up with. There is something quite consistent, I think, about what you've chosen. Those two definitely work together. Yeah. These two 
have a similar feel. I, what I liked about these three was that a photograph very quickly becomes nostalgic. You know, it, a very, it's very difficult for a photograph to live in the moment. It, it dates really quickly. And so this looks like you're looking at a family snapshot. And it's when you look back at an old retro photograph, everyone always looks like they lived without colour in their life. But of course, they were just as colourful probably then as we are now. Um, this one, I think, is, does have a sort of fairly autobiographical connotation for me because there's nothing I love more than art history. So you've got Guernica, Hokusai's Wave, Rem Raphael, Venus. Lichtenstein. Of all of them, it's probably the one that I wouldn't sell in my gallery, but it's one that if I saw it at an art fair and I could afford it, I would be just, I'd just have to buy it. That's interesting. Different yeah. levels of taste, your own yeah. personal one versus what you might mm, sell. Mm. Oscar Wilde said that all criticism is a form of autobiography. Yeah. And I feel a bit like, I haven't shown you mine yet, but it's, it's slightly exposing, actually, when you pick things yeah. and then say, this is what I've chosen. Yeah, particularly when we've got two references to fake blonde hair. Yeah, what's that yeah, telling I'm us? Yeah, I'm starting to get a bit worried, actually, about my <laughs> taste level. <laughs> I've picked things that I think are quite pleasing, satisfying images that you could have at home, that you might have on a wall, in a small, intimate, domestic setting. If, if this makes it in, we could be wandering around the exhibition and there'll be a moment of stillness mm. and quietness and a space for technical brilliance within the show. So that was the thinking there. Yeah. Walthamstow Marshes, which is somewhere I cycle through quite a lot, so again, a personal connection. Yeah. And I, although it's another sort of monochromatic work, again, I think technically it's very good. This one is pretty safe and I think was kind of pleasing. Now this I just picked tongue in cheek, not because it's just a bunch of um, statues of naked women, but I liked the idea that it's sort of puncturing the pretension sometimes of looking at art and doing a bit like what yeah. we're doing now, yeah. pontificating about something. Mm. But my favorite piece of all is this very big photograph. And there's no one in this, but it's clearly a self-portrait mm -hmm. and it feels full of identity and personality, mm. even down to, you know, finishing the coffee to kickstart yeah, some inspiration at the beginning of the day. feels warm, doesn't it? Yeah. As a journalist, which of these artists would you want to sort of know more about? This is clearly complicated and there's a lot happening here. Yeah. You want to find out about the person who's created it. There's a creative intelligence behind it. Yeah. Well, we've had a sense of being like the people who see these works yeah. initially pass I mean, by. It's a rush. Of respect for them. Having said that, I feel quite confident about at least two to three of my picks. You're quite confident yeah, about I'm, yours. Yeah, I'm quietly confident. I think I hope that I see some of them in there. But the next stage of this is obviously from tomorrow, all of the works that are selected will be put in the gallery, and someone starts to hang them, and then of course you have a much more complicated process yeah. of how they bounce off against each other, a making a coherent room, rules, yeah. hanging a show, really. The works we've chosen, as well as all the others in the vault, are going into the hallowed galleries of the Royal Academy, while the rejected works are stacked in their thousands for collection. Back in the outside world, the first letters of notification are going out. My husband told me to practice my faces, <laughs> but I haven't. Oh, they haven't been chosen. So that is sad. I feel really disappointed, but on the other hand, I, I know a lot of people entered and it's not going to stop me entering in the future. I think my work is good enough to be shown there. I, I've got so used to getting the old reject, but... I'm pleased to inform you that the selection committee is still considering your works. Oh, that's made my day. Oh, that really. <laughs> They're still considering my work. Yes! <laughs> okay, cool. Woo. Amalia, my mum needs a hug because my work wasn't selected, so I feel sad about that. Okay, I'll give you a hug. <laughs> I have to go upstairs and do homework now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> how, how could I be unhappy? Down, down a bit to the... Just drop a left. Once the shortlisted works are in the galleries, the serious...